hostilities have intensified between the powerful M23 rebels and the army in parts of Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo as Congolese await the results of the December 20th general elections. As Zenem Netizaidi reports, the violence has some residents fleeing to other areas for safety. In the aftermath of the December 20th elections, M23 rebels have resumed attacks on the positions of self-defense resistance fighters and the Congolese army near the town of Sake in the eastern province of North Kivu. Locals say the attacks have been happening in the hills around the village of Mushaki, which rebels seized recently, and the village of Karuba, both of them in an area called the Masisi Territory. Ombeni Balingene, a resident of Sake, criticizes the conditions in which people like him have been spending the Christmas season. He says since December 20th, after the elections, clashes have started in the Mushaki Mountains from where people are fleeing and arriving in large numbers here in Sake. We didn't have a very good Christmas because we thought every second that the M33 robbers were going to enter the town as there was the crackling of bullets and the explosion of bombs in large numbers. In a statement read out by Lieutenant Colonel Guillaume Jike Kaiko and Nami Spokesman in North Kivu, the military speaks of a violation of a ceasefire called for by the United States. The military also threatens to take consequent decisions against the rebels and the Rwandan army, which, according to him, supports the rebels. He says every day these rebels attack positions held by the loyalist army and reservists, ignoring the ceasefire recommended by the United States of America and the international community. Every day, Rwandan troops continue to enter Congolese territory, disrupting the ceasefire process. If this situation continues, the armed forces of the Democratic Republic of Congo will take the necessary steps to respond to these provocations. New displacements of civilians have been reported since last week as a result of these clashes, and Masisi Territory human rights defender Tumsifu Bazungu is calling on the government to find solutions to the humanitarian situation facing the internally displaced. Bazungu says the humanitarian situation is severely critical because humanitarians are unable to respond normally to the needs of the displaced. Hence our appeal to the government to act as quickly as possible for our populations present in camps. Masisi and another area, Ruchuru, were excluded from the electoral process because of the security situation in the eastern part of Congo. Like Masisi, Ruchuru is in the hands of the M23 rebels. Eastern Congo is a mineral-rich region, despite Congo's large reserves of minerals like gold and cobalt. It remains an impoverished nation. Zanem Netizaidi, VOA News, Goma in the Democratic Republic of Congo. The Sudanese journalist syndicate is urging the rapid support forces, who recently assumed control of a significant portion of Al Jazeera state from the South Armed Forces, to ensure the safety of civilians and journalists. They are also calling on the international community and the RSF to establish secure routes through which journalists and civilians can escape conflict areas. Nabil Biyajo spoke with Abdelmonim Abu Idris, president of the syndicate, who is currently stuck in Al Jazeera state. Tens of thousands of civilians, they are in the war zone areas, uh, especially down like uh, Madani and small town north Madani called Hasahisa and other villages around Madani. Uh, those people, uh, they under uh, the exchange of fires and the rapid support of they took control of most of the zero states. They are uh, red, the houses, 
goods and goods and properties, uh, it their cars, and the journalists, many journalists, we report that many journalists have been stopped and questions by uh, uh, rapid support members, and we are really worried about uh, their safety because they have been scattered in many villages in South Jazeera and East Jazeera and Central Jazeera. Uh, and there is no there is no vehicles to take them to any to take them to any place they want. We uh, ask uh, the international community and the international organization to put their pressure on, on rapid support uh, to open safety corridors uh, for the civilians, especially especially for the journalists, to leave the war zone areas to the safety areas. Do we know if uh, journalists are being deliberately targeted uh, because of their job, because of what they do? Uh, we have some reports. Many journalists have been uh, stopped by rapid support uh, forces, and they are members, and they have been questions, and they have stopped for. Uh, till now, we didn't have any report of uh, uh, real attack, but have been in questions, and they have been stopped. And why? And they have been asked why they are in these areas, and from where they came. Uh, for this one, because we, uh, because this attack with this uh, questions, we are really concerned about their safety. Tens of thousands of people fled Khartoum and they ended up in Al Jazeera. They sought refuge there, including many journalists who decided to stay in Sudan, including yourself. Uh, when you left Khartoum. But now it seems like Al Jazeera is a war zone with the RSF expanding uh, now about to enter Sinar. Are, are you being displaced again? Are journalists and civilians being displaced again? Tens of thousands of civilians and tens of journalists have been displaced again from Madani uh, uh, to uh, other areas. Some of them reach now. Some of them have been, as I said before, have been scattered in the villages around Madani. I myself, I have been displaced again. And, and the problem is that when we displace, there is no safety corridors to leave the war zone areas. We are being stuck in the war zone areas, and there is no vehicles. Uh, the oil uh, stations have been uh, closed completely. Uh, if you want to leave the, the area, you have to walk for uh, tens kilometers, and it's not safety because you can't been stops, you can be looted, you can be, and uh, even uh, you, can, uh, you can come under the exchange of fires. Uh, thank you very much, Abu Dhris, for speaking with me, and please uh, be safe and good luck. The Zambian authorities announced on Thursday that they were stepping up their health campaign to combat chorella, a disease that has been on the rise since October and has already claimed the lives of nearly 100 people in the southern African country this year. The Minister of Health, Slivia Masebo, called for more drastic hygiene measures in households and her counterparts in charge of water. Mike Mposha said that chlorine would be more widely distributed to disinfect contaminated water in the regions most affected by Corella. Five deaths and 111 new cases of contamination were recorded in 24 hours due in particular to heavy rainfall which accelerates the transmission of the bacterial disease through infected water and food. There have been 93 deaths this year from this acute diarrhea infection most since October, according to the National Institute of Public Health. Our nation is facing a major health challenge, Mrs. Masebo told a press conference there 
mortality rate of the current epidemic around 3% is very worrying, she added, bearing in mind the internationally it is less than 1%. Zimbabwe, Zambia's neighbor also affected by Corella, has declared a state of emergency according to the World Health Organization more than 250 deaths have been recorded since February. The World Health Organization has expressed concern at the growing number of Corella cases worldwide in recent years, with Africa being the hardest hit. The number of reported Corella cases has more than doubled from 223,030. 370 in 2021 to 472,697 in 2022. In 2023, there were already over 500,080 cases in September, according to the UN Health Agency. Zambia is also facing its worst Anthrax epidemic since 2011, Kenya, Malawi, Uganda, and Zimbabwe have also recorded cases of anthrax this year, with a total of 20 deaths and some 1,100 suspected cases in these five countries as of mid-December. <laughs> 